3D printing can be a lot of fun, but you don't have to spend a ton of money to get started. For under $200, you can now get a decent 3D printer, some filament, which is the plastic that you use to print things, and also software to make it all work. I'll explain it all on today's Film with Friday. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Filament Friday is brought to you by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. For this under $200 example, I'm going to use the Ender 3 V3 SE. This is the latest Ender 3 and should not be confused with the early Ender 3s that were hard to put together, needed a lot of adjustments. This thing goes together really easy, has great auto level to get prints to stick real easy, which was a problem for a lot of people with the early ones. And it has direct drive, which allows you to print flexibles and other materials. In fact, you can print little toys and trinkets or actual functional prints like this vise that I use to hold circuit boards. It's a very capable 3D printer. And I bought this one for $169 plus tax at Micro Center. And if you don't have a Micro Center near you, Creality is having a Christmas sale for $189. And you can actually buy this on Amazon. Now, you'll pay a little bit more. You're not going to stay under $200. But you have the option of returning it easily if you don't like it. So I'm going to stick to this at $169, which allows me a lot of space to buy filament and still have money in my pocket. The Ender 3 V3 SE does require some assembly, and they give you the tools required to put it together. They also give you a printed manual that takes you step by step how to put this printer together. But I'm going to go a step further here, and I'm going to show you step by step visually how to put this together so you can read the manual and use my video as a reference. Another bonus, Micro Center gives you a $10 off coupon in the box for filament, so there's another savings. So let me show you how to put this together to help you get started on your 3D printing journey. The Ender 3 V3 SE comes as a kit, but it's really easy to put together. There's three screws that hold one side of the rail, and then there's three screws that hold the other side. You put these in from the bottom. And then there's actually two screws at the back that go in from the top. Then you need to just connect the LCD and then there's three screws that hold that LCD to the side of the base. From there, you have to connect the main cable to the hot end assembly. And then there's a bracket that goes on top of that to hold the wires in place. Two screws tighten that up. Then there's a connector for the X stepper motor. And there's also a connector for the Z stepper motor. And there's only one Z stepper motor, but there's two threaded rods connected by a belt, which is really nice. There's a bracket behind the X stepper motor for the cable to snap into. The spool holder assembly goes into the top of the unit and there's no more T-nuts. There's nuts built into the top of the unit so you just insert the two screws and tighten them up. And the spool holder to the bracket is already done for you. You don't have to do that either. So this is much easier. Make sure the voltage switch at the base of the unit is set to the right voltage, 115 for the US. Just plug in the power cord and this thing is ready to go. This is the easiest Ender 3 I've ever put together. The printer does come with a small sample of PLA filament. That's the type of filament, the type of plastic that works best in a printer, especially for a beginner. This vise was printed in PLA. But I don't really recommend you use this sample because it's not in a spool. So it can easily get tangled, which would be very frustrating for a beginner. That's why I recommend you buy a full spool of filament. This one was $18.99 at Micro Center, so just under $20. And if you forget to get it when you buy the printer, you can use the $10 coupon and save more. They do include an SD card with software on it, including a file of a cat that you can print. It's a sample file. So you could actually put this into the printer and print without ever using a computer and get your first 3D print to run. And if you don't have a large SD card reader, they do give you an adapter so you can plug it into a USB port. The next step in the manual is actually to load the filament. You load the filament up here on the spool holder and then you take the end of it and you actually cut it at 45 degrees with a cutter that they include in the box. So you cut that so it can easily insert to the top 
of the hot end assembly. This is what gets hot and melts the plastic. There's a lever here that releases the filament so you can pull that back, slide the filament in, and then let it go and it'll grab and then ready to pull the filament into the nozzle where it'll be melted. But before we do that, you have to run the auto level system which will adjust the bed in the software so it knows how to put that first layer down perfectly, make it nice and straight. So it explains this in the manual, but let me show you how it works right here. The auto level on this thing is the best I've seen from Creality. It goes through a three-step process. Initially, it heats the nozzle, then it tries to clean the nozzle, which isn't perfect. And then it does a Z offset maneuver, where it centers, goes to the side, taps a few times. It works really well, and then it goes through a 16-point auto level and records each reading and displays it on the LCD. And you can edit it, you can confirm it, and go forward, and then it'll give you the Z offset, which you can actually change. But that is all done automatically during that leveling system. So I decided to run my squares test, and it came out perfect. I couldn't ask for a better bed level on an under 3. Now I showed you those adjustments that you can make to the Z offset and the rest of the bed, but don't touch them. You don't have to do anything. It's going to print really, really good. The only reason I showed you is so you know that it's there. And also that squares test that I did, you don't have to run that squares test. It's a file that I run on printers just to see how good that first layer is. There's no gaps and no squares. Everything's stuck. I just want you to see how good the level system is on this. So now we're actually ready to run the sample print. Take the SD card provided, flip it upside down, and slide it into the side of the printer. Then go to the menu and click on Print and find the CAT file. There's only one there. And then scroll down to Confirm, click that, and the print will start. Now this is on time lapse. It's really sped up. But when you're done, you should have your first 3D print, and it should look like this. And this took about two hours to complete. So now you probably want to choose your own 3D print. Let's say you want to print the 3D Benchy. This is a famous little test print. Well, you need to put that on the SD card. In order to do that, you need a software called a slicer. And Creality offers a slicer that's free that you can put on your computer. They do offer the slicer on the SD card, but I suggest you use Method 2 in their manual and go to their official website and download the latest version. Go to that site and find the files for the SE version of the Ender 3. And then scroll down to the version of computer you have and download the program and install it like you would any other program on your computer. Once it's installed and you start it up, it looks like this. But now we've got to put the SE files on the slicer. So if you go up to the drop down up here under printer and click on add, a whole bunch of printers will come up. Go to the Ender 3 section and add the SE. It'll tell you which nozzle, just accept, and now you've got all the files, including the slicer files, for this printer. Now to find files to print, you can go to things.com, or actually have a membership you can join. So up in the search bar, we're going to search for 3D Benchy, and we're going to get a whole bunch of stuff, but we want the original here. So we're going to click on this, and this will actually take us to another site where we can download the 3D Benchy. You go to Files, click on Download, and now we'll have the .stl file. Now we go back to Creality Print and we open that file that we downloaded and here it is, the 3 dbenchystl Open it and it'll appear in the slicer. We already have the settings under the printer window and it's going to print at a 0.2 layer height. If we want to change anything, there's an edit button down here and you can change any settings you want. But as a beginner, I would say just leave this alone and just click on Slice. Once it's done slicing, it'll jump to the preview mode. It'll tell you how much time and how much material is going to be used. And then you can scroll up and see how this thing's going to print. Then click on Export to Local and save it to the SD card. Put that SD card on the printer. And now we're going to do the same thing as we did with the cat. Now just click on Print, select the file, the 3D Benchy, and it'll print just like we did with the cat. But now you've selected the 3D print. Now what if you want to make a custom print, like this cover that I made for my recliner so it can slide on the carpet easier? I designed this in Tinkercad, Tinkercad.com. It's a free software that you can use right in your computer and design 3D prints. I took one of the existing caps and I took some measurements so I could try to recreate it. Now I'm not going to show you all the steps in Tinkercad, I've got other videos on this, but it's actually pretty easy just moving blocks around. But once you create it, you can export it as a .stl file, bring it into Creality Print, and then we can slice it and print it, just like we did with the 3D Benchy. I export it to the SD card, put it in a machine, clicked on Print, selected the file, and it printed my cover that I could put on my chair 
and now my chair slides nice and easy thanks to my 3D print. It's really endless what you can do with a 3D printer. And the fact that you can get started for under $200 with the software and everything, well, that's a great place to start. And then if you ever design something that you want to mass produce, well, check out my sponsor, PCBWay.com. PCBWay offers an online 3D printing service on professional high quality 3D printers. So you can take your design that you printed on your $200 setup and send it to them and get a professional 3D print. They also offer injection molding if you want to go that direction. If you need CNC machining of metal parts, that's something they offer as well. Or maybe you need sheet metal fabrication. That's another service they offer. So you can use your under $200 setup to get all the bugs out, get the print the way you want it, and then send it to a professional service and get perfect 3D prints. Check them out, pcbway.com. Now a lot of people will sell their 3D prints on Etsy and eBay. I did it. I needed a replacement flag for my Rubbermaid mailbox, and I found out other people needed it too. So I designed it in Tinkercad, and I started selling them. And then eventually it got so popular, I switched to injection molding. So you can do it too. 3D printing is a great place to start, and you don't have to spend a lot of money. This $200 printer setup, or under $200 really, will get you started on your way to 3D printing and maybe even make a little extra money. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way, or get a membership at things.com. And if nothing else, click on that Filament Friday logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.